Plumia. My name is Miles Folsom, and I, I would like to begin first by just thanking you for this honor uh, of valedictorian. This is certainly something that I never expected to achieve in my life, something that I thought the door was closed on forever. Now, I do wish to congratulate you for your achievements, uh, but I also wish to welcome you. I wish to welcome you to the beginning of your lives, the beginning of a whole new set of endeavors, passions, loves, and desires that you're going to find in the coming months and years, that you're going to find through the lens of the education that you've been given here in this community. And for that, I wish to welcome you to the future that you represent. The juice was worth the squeeze, huh? What a time it has been for all of us. I remember when I first got here, being assigned Aristotle and banging my head against a volume that was maybe this big because I just could not comprehend the clarity uh, of someone's thoughts, such complex thoughts. And I had to read it five times before I finally understood it. And that was how I began my academic career, with a tenacity and a doggedness just not to quit. Uh, and it was with that same passion and drive that I continued my academic career. Uh, and luckily, unbeknownst to me, it put me here on this platform today. Again, a place that I could have never guessed. I'd say over the course of our four years, and for some of you too, we have been introduced to a world of people in a world of knowledge, a world of knowledge that spans thousands of years, a conversation among humans that has been added to and corrected through the centuries. We have been handed the responsibility of that corpus of knowledge that we know to be education. We are now responsible for it. We are now the academics and scholars who shoulder the burden of precedence and push back against the brutality of baseness in our world. Because that is the responsibility of knowledge. That is the responsibility of the education that we have been gifted. And we have yet to even begin our ascent. As we leave here today, we will all go out in search of our lives. And I search for it in the eyes of the disadvantaged, of those who are beaten down and trodden. For it is in their salvation that we will find our own salvation. And in healing the rest of humanity, we will find the fulfillment of our own lives. The purpose of knowledge it's not simply for attainment, but it's application. And the application is never done alone. It is done in community with other human beings actively on a day-to-day -day basis as you share that communion and love with one another. It reminds me of a Hoosier, some of you may know by the name of Eugene B. Debs in Terre Haute. He was a Labor Party leader in the early 20th century. Now why I bring him, up, bring him up is because of the courage that this man displayed. And surely you can think of other examples of courage. Uh, but he was put on trial for his refusal to advocate for the war in 1918. And that man had the courage to stand before the United States Supreme Court and say, while there is a lower class, I am in. While there is a criminal element, I am of it. While there is a soul in prison, I am not free. And that is the type of courage to stand before anyone in the world and to freely display your beliefs, to speak with confidence and courage, not to be stopped by fear, for when you know something is good and it is right, you carry it to the very end. That is the courage 
I wish to show you through my life. That is the force of will that took me to get here and that I hope you can take forward into your lives into a far greater place than this stage. As you make your way in your professional life, all I ask is that you remember your mission. Whatever mission that may be, don't let it fade. Whatever your passion is, whatever your love is, right now, as you have time to think about it, don't let it go. Don't let somebody else take your dream and replace it with theirs. Whatever it may be, hold on to it for dear life and pursue it, for that is your mission. And don't ever let the little things go. Too often, you see something that's wrong, and maybe you'll let it go, it's a small thing. But as soon as you do that, the large things somehow find a very clever way to get small. And then you begin to overlook them too. You must keep a constant vigilance of the world and of yourself walking forward. I don't ask anything easy of you. Leaving here, I would hope that you would find the hardest thing in the world for you to accomplish, and that you would spend the rest of your life trying to accomplish it. And if you did accomplish it, I would hope that you would find something else and you would keep running. Dream big. Believe in yourself. Believe that you can do anything you want to. Look back at history. Anything that ever happened, you can do. You are not limited by anything but your own mind. And I would hope, standing here today, speaking this truth, you would believe it because I have performed it. We have all received the divine gift of willpower, of free will, the gift to become a creator within creation, to imitate God as a maker. This is what free will does for us here on our planet. And I ask you, what will you do with your own free will? What will you do with your time? Who will get it? Will people get it? Will technology get it? Computers, movies, videos? Who receives your love going forward? Briefly, I'd like to share my dream with you. I wish to build a prison, the most humane prison in the world. Perhaps that is far beyond me. It's quite a big dream. But whether I complete it, or someone after me completes it, or the idea is found in a book 700 years from now, and another man completes it, I am fulfilled in pursuing that end for the rest of my life, knowing that someday that investment will turn around and it will pay off. And so again, it is an honor. I deeply appreciate this. This is something that I never thought that I could achieve. And I accept this medal for the battle before it. That I'm afraid I accept it conditionally. I accept it not on my own behalf, but I accept it as a symbol for all the underdogs in the world, for everyone who thinks that they can't get up that the door is shut and that life is over. I accept it as a symbol for them so that they may know a ray of hope in the darkness. And I tell you, when that prison is built, whether it is in 10 years or 500, I'm gonna make sure that the cornerstone of that edifice rests the top of this metal so that no one ever mistakes the community of love that gives humanity back to those who have lost it. Thank you.